Hello you gorgeous person you, I'm Chris from Techspert and today I'm going to be ritually humiliated over and over again in games like Call of Duty Mobile by annoying little school children and their stupid fast reactions because I'm going to be testing out the fresh new Black Shark 5 Pro. This fresh new 2022 game and smartphone will cost you between 639 quid and just over 800 quid depending on how much memory and storage you fancy having chucked in there. And that is a couple hundred quid more than the regular Black Shark 5. So what's actually been upgraded for this here Pro model and is it worth a punt? Well, let's whip it on out the box, take you on a full on tour. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Uh, all right, so first up, we've got some sort of little pomey thing. Under the ordinary reality, an extraordinary journey shall begin through the mist and shadow I conquer with my blade, yada yada, bollocks bollocks. So inside the box, you've got a one Black Shark 5 Pro, of course. You've got an absolute monster of an adapter. Holy shit, 120 watts. You could build a house with this thing. Our good friend, Mr. Type-C USB cable. You've got yourself a prophylactic case to wrap around the Black Shark 5 Pro and help keep it safe as well. And you've even got some stickers bundled in there in case you're six. And that, as they say, is very much that. So let's check out the fun. So here we have the Black Shark 5 Pro and it's another 6.67 inch beast. Pretty standard size for smartphones in 2022. And of course it is immediately apparent that it is a gaming smartphone because they can't resist just slapping a load of random gobbledygook all over that back end. All this random pattern action. You've got the Black Shark uh, logo down here and the brand in there as well and the O5 to indicate it is number five in the series. And you even have a actually surprisingly dinky bit of LED action slapped on the back too. More on all that shenanigans in a bit. And Black Shark didn't specifically indicate what materials were used in the construction of this smartphone in the press materials, but it feels like a glass back with that matte finish. So hopefully it won't get too scuffy, although I have noticed some little sort of greasy prints already cropping up on the arse. Then you have a metal frame stretching around the edge. No mention of Gorilla Glass or anything like that. So I'm not sure exactly what this thing is constructed of, but at least you do get a pre-installed screen protector here up front. This right here is the stellar black model of the Black Shark 5 Pro, but you can also pick it up in nebula white if you want something a little bit brighter. At 220 grams, it is a bit of a heifer again, just like previous Black Sharks and most gaming smartphones, to be fair. Have a quick whiz around the rest of the design. Down below, you've got your bot-mounted speaker, Type-C USB port, and your SIM tray. It is a double-sided SIM tray. Unfortunately, no space at all in there for a micro SD memory card, though. On the top end, you've got another speaker, and then over on the right side, you have your shoulder triggers with the little pull-out switches. And it's an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor built into that power button. And that is mounted really high up on that edge as well, so it's kind of awkward to reach to if you've got tiny little goblin hands like myself. You basically have to clutch the Black Shark 5 Pro halfway up the phone in order to comfortably use this, uh, certainly if you've got tiny hands like me, but uh, otherwise, seems perfectly fine, nice and responsive. Now what we have here is the Joy UI 13 launcher slapped on top of Android 12. Joy UI 13, as you can see, they're based on Mi UI 13. So there are a lot of similarities. Similarity, that's not a word. A lot of similarities with Xiaomi's launcher. So there's quite a lot of customization options, lots of themes to play around with. Oh, hello kitty. Go usual quick ball, one hand modes, all that good stuff. But you also do get a lot of bonus gaming bits. So for instance, the LED slapped around on the other side can be customized using the light effect app. It's not just a pointless game and gimmick. You can use it as a makeshift notifications light when you've got incoming calls and other bits popping up. And you've got a variety of different effects you can choose between and you can also customize the actual color. Have a little play around with this little slider bar at the bottom, make it anything you want basically and also change up the light and effect. So it may be weenie, but it is pretty clever stuff. Of course, you also have all kinds of custom wallpapers and other bits as well. Game is real, y'all. But of course, the best gaming tool here on the Black Shark 5 Pro is that Shark Space UI, which you can just activate with a quick tap and it very noisily starts up. Otherwise, you know, if tapping an app icon isn't cool enough for you, you can just pop out those shoulder buttons instead and hold both of those down. And this also will activate the Shark Space. This doesn't really appear to have changed up much at all over previous Black Shark uh, versions. So you've got fast access to whatever games you've got installed on the smartphone, as you can see. These covers popped up automatically, but you can change them and you can also change the game configuration as well. 
So for instance, Genshin Impact, because it's a bit of a memory guzzler, quite a demanding game, I have it starting in ludicrous mode, which basically throws all of the smartphone's resources at that game while culling other stuff in the background, etc., making sure that it runs as smoothly as possible. But as this little warning here helpfully explains, this may cause the phone to heat up faster and it'll also absolutely muller your battery life. And you've got a heap of other customization options thrown in here as well, the likes of the refresh rate, for instance, the touch response, very important for games like Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG, where you want to get it just right, just the right sensitivity. You could also change up your voice, and it looks like there's even an Uncle Spurt option. Hello, I'm Uncle Spurt, and game is real, yo. Hello, I'm Uncle Spurt, and game is real, yo. Oh my god, that's freaking terrifying. Whoever designed that one clearly had one of those uncles that uh, we don't talk about anymore. And lots of networking options tucked away in here as well. Again, very important for those online games like Call of Duty and PUBG, where you don't want to be losing your connection midway through. But anyway, once you are good to go, just give the game a tap and then up it pops. And I've got to say, the first thing that's impressed me with the Black Shark 5 Pro is not only does it download files really fast, but just loading games is so, so quick. Literally a few seconds and Genshin Impact is loaded up, ready to go. I've never seen it be this quick on any other smartphone. Now, before we get balls deep into performance and battery life and all of that good stuff while gaming, you can actually drag out an in-game menu by swiping from either top corner like so. From here, you've got access to pretty much all of the main gaming tools that you could possibly want. So, for instance, you can configure the shoulder buttons, more on that in a sec. You can actually dive into the game config settings from within the game as well if you need to change them up at any time. If you find you get bugged a lot, you can block notifications and calls and things like that. Loads of other stuff, you can clean out the uh, the memory, you've got a macro tool as well if you need it. And the Black Shark 5 Pro can also keep full tabs on the performance of the smartphone as you're gaming as well, telling you how good your internet connection is, what your current frame rate is, etc. But now let's turn our attention to the shoulder buttons which are mounted over here on the right edge. And these can be quickly and easily popped out simply by flicking these little switches. And then go to that master controller section inside of the game menu. You'll be able to set them up. Simply drag the little icons onto the virtual on-screen buttons that you want them to control and away you go. And if you want it, you've even got much deeper customization than that. It's quite impressive just how much uh, Black Shark has actually crammed into here. You've also got that magic press feature as usual. As usual, this allows you to push really hard on the left or right side of the screen in order to perform another action. And these little areas are fully customizable again. Again, you've got strong customization here, including the ability to change up the sensitivity of the pressure areas, but I tend to leave this switched off as I tend to like grip the phone really hard when I'm a bit anxious. Now, as you'd expect at this sort of price point, the 6.67 inch OLED screen is a bit of a stunner. Seems to be very similar tech to the older Black Shark 4 Pro. You've got a full HD plus resolution, 2400 by 1080, so nice crisp visuals. It's got full 10-bit color support as well, strong contrast, wide viewing angles, all the shiz you would expect from an OLED display. You do once again, however, have a selfie cam orifice tucked away over there on the left hand side and it is centrally positioned so it's a bit more intrusive than if it was budged away in a corner. Kind of a shame as most gaming smartphones don't have a selfie orifice, they tend to just have the selfie cam wedged into a big thick upper bezel. You've got that 144Hz refresh rate support as well for supported games, not Genshin Impact because that tops off at 60 sadly, and a 720Hz touch response and as I mentioned before you can tweak the sensitivity. I find it absolutely perfect for whatever game I was up against. And yes, the Black Shark 5 Pro does sport a stereo speaker arrangement, fine-tuned with some hot DTS action as well. Nice sound quality for smartphone speakers, but they are a bit easy to muffle with your palms accidentally when you are gaming. And while there's no headphone jack action here, the Bluetooth 5.2 connectivity seems to work just fine. You've got support for all the codecs you'd expect, a bit of LDAC action, you've got Aptex HD, etc. Now the big upgrade when it comes to the Black Shark 5 Pro model versus the standard Black Shark 5 is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset which runs the show with that Adreno 730 GPU packed inside. This is backed by either 8, 12 or 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM. My review model was the 12 gig so it certainly had plenty of power stuffed inside of that lovely sexy frame there. 
And certainly no worries when it came to the performance. Genshin Impact on the maxed out detail settings running at 60 frames per second with that ludicrous mode activated. I didn't see a single stumble. Beautifully smooth throughout. Even when the action got rather intense and I was getting my ass handed to me by all kinds of different gribblies all at the same time, I didn't see the frame rate drop at all. It was perfect. And as you would expect from a gaming smartphone, you've got some proper clever cool and tech packed in there. It's actually a dual vapor chamber setup. But despite this smarty pants tech, I did find that the Black Shark 5 Pro started to get a bit toasty up at the top end there after playing Genshin Impact on those maxed out settings for a good half hour or so. Thankfully, this heat didn't seem to impact the actual performance of Genshin Impact at all. Still played smoothly, perfectly, no worries at all. But for instance, if you're going to be plugging in this smartphone while you're playing the likes of Genshin Impact on the maxed out settings, then it is going to get very, very hot indeed. There are a couple of possible solutions for getting around this, however. First of all, pull out that in-game menu, drag down the extra little bonus bit here at the bottom, and you will see there is a bypass the battery option. When this is active, the battery won't actually charge when you plug the phone in. The current power level will just be sustained. Definitely a particularly good idea if you're going to use that 120 watt super fast charger. Or alternatively, if you chuck a bit more cash at Black Shark, you can grab their magnetic cooler accessory. Let's yank this bad boy out. Inside of here you get the magnetic cooler itself, which again has got a good heft to it. Quite chunky too, but it's basically just a giant fan, as you can see there. And this does have a Type-C USB port because it needs its own power supply. So you can plug it into the phone, get it powered up that way. And this basically attaches to the back end of the Black Shark 5 Pro, courtesy of a little magnetic sticky pad that's bundled in the box. It does help to keep the Black Shark 5 Pro cool under pressure, although it is slightly awkward, shall we say, with obviously the USB cable jutting out and everything like that as well. As far as the connectivity goes, you've got 5G and Wi-Fi 6E support with the Black Shark 5 Pro, so perfect, stable online experience when you're gaming on the likes of Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, no worries whatsoever there. And on the battery front, it's a 4,650 milliamp hour cell that they've crammed inside of this lovely little chassis here. That's the same size as you'll find in the regular Black Shark 5 and a mite bigger than the previous generation. So don't expect this thing to survive too long when you are doing your Genshin Impact. From a full battery with Genshin Impact maxed out in those top graphics settings, I got around two hours plus some dregs of gameplay before the battery was fully drained. Thankfully, things aren't quite as dire with the likes of Call of Duty Mobile. That one reliably dropped at 15% per hour. So I got more like six to seven hours of use on a full charge. And of course, you've got that 120 watt fast charge support as well. So you can get a full charge in this thing in around 15 minutes at the plug. We do have a couple of different battery charging modes to choose from. This is set to speed flash fill in uh, by default, which of course maximizes that 120 watt fast charging support. Although thankfully you do have some built-in safety features to help prevent the phone from getting too hot and just melting in front of your very eyes. Otherwise, alternatively, you've got the constant temperature charging mode. This is the, uh, whoa, let's calm things down a bit mode to, uh, to make sure that the battery charges in a safer fashion. So if you're not super impatient, wanting it to fill up as fast as possible, I'd definitely recommend chucking that on. And sadly, no, there is no wireless charging support on this bad boy either. As for the storage, you've got a choice of 128 or 256 gigs of space. This is the 256 model. It is UFS 3.1 in either case. And as I mentioned before, no micro SD support. So the Black Shark 5 Pro offers a, a beefy bit of Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset action, but another upgrade for the Pro model is the 108 megapixel primary camera sensor. If you are gonna use it as your full-time smartphone as well, then it's always good to have a reliable camera. And like Xiaomi's other smartphones, you've got all the usual camera features such as the AI scene optimization option. You've got a bit of portrait mode. If you tap more, you've got plenty of other stuff stuck away in here like a night mode and a max resolution mode. And if you flip all the way over to this side, you've also got a pro mode where you can shoot again up to 108 megapixel resolution images. Play around for the ISO levels, the white balance. Although I'm not seeing an option to shoot in a raw file format. And if you want to shoot some home movies where you can capture video at up to 4K Ultra HD resolution at either 30 or 60 frames per second. And also slapped here on the back, you've got a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter, your usual bog standard effort there. And there's also a five megapixel macro sensor if you really want to get a bit of that on the go. And then around front, it is a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. Again, I wouldn't expect too much 
out of this bad boy but again you've got full portrait smarts all that good stuff and in case you're wondering on the video quality that does top off at full hd resolution no 4k option for the selfie shooter unfortunately and as you're gonna hear my voice has been picked up reasonably well by those built-in mics and there you have it that in a nutshell is the fresh new black shark 5 pro gaming smartphone as i say not exactly particularly cheap compared with some of the sort of more mid-range gaming blowers but it does pack some incredibly good specs and some great gaming features stuffed in there too the only thing is perhaps not a massive evolution over the previous generation and would you grab the pro model over the standard black shark 5 given it is 200 quid more as well It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week cheers everyone love you